Uh, Ian, we have a we got a Patreon. Patreon.com slash CU podcast. Uh, video, full video podcast. I do uh, a monthly hangout. I'm probably yeah. doing that one this week. Uh, we do writings. I put you, one up You do recently. a writing, but put, we're going to start doing a, a monthly exclusive podcast yeah. just for the Patreon. Be like, well, we're going to talk about whatever. Whatever we want, not just video games, whatever we nope, want. Nope, that's how we've found it works best with extra napkins. It's just, uh, I mean, extra napkins is just, just talk about whatever. People who are buying a, a bonus podcast just want to hear us riff and shoot the shit, so that's what we'll do. They're not buying me, they're supporting. They're supporting. They're supporting. They're purchasing. That's a, that's a beauty. <sighs> and then we do poll topics. All right, in second place, this is a, sh- a split here. 46% will computer games ever be as collectible as console games? Uh, yeah, God, I hope so. I have a lot of rare games. Uh, and then first place, summertime related video game memories, 54%. Summer, 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 summer time. Um, so, yeah, I do have some summer memories of games. And I don't, now that I'm remembering them, I'm getting deja vu. Like, maybe we talked about this oh, we before. we did this topic before. Okay. We, do this topic for, we, 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 we missed our eighth, eight-year anniversary, which happened, uh, what was that, like a few weeks ago? Five weeks ago? I don't know. Fives and zeros, Pat. Fives and zeros, okay. Um, Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast is a very clear summer memory for me. Uh, I was going into my senior year of high school, and I was very excited about the Dreamcast. Um, I had pre-ordered one, was ready to buy it, and uh, Hollywood Video did a special You Can Rent a Dreamcast uh, promotion like a month or two months before the damn thing came out. Mm Mm-hmm to test it out sega wanted to get it in people's hands and um so i went and did it and the rental was uh, relatively reasonable it was like i think it was like 30 bucks to rent the system or 20 bucks to rent like the system and and for a weekend for a weekend and it came with sonic adventure came with sonic adventure one and no vmu no way of saving the game um, but better pause it and turn the TV off. They definitely, though, did charge a uh, refundable three hundred dollar deposit if you kept it, kept it, or yeah. or broke it. Um, so I went, I rented it, and I played Sonic uh, Adventure that entire weekend. And it's, it, like I said, it's just a very clear summer memory to me because it was in the summer. I remember being very nice out, and instead of being outside, I was just kind of holding. Uh, playing this game all weekend with my friends and we did we just kept passing the controller back and forth to do levels with the different characters and uh, we got like most of the way through the game the first day and then just turned the tv off and then the next morning woke up and went right back to it um, so that's a big one more than three hours in a weekend oh no yeah. oh no uh, another one that reminds me of summer uh, was uh, and i've told this story before too but it was uh, sitting down and beating rampage uh, oh yeah, NES with, God, that with, sounds horrible. With my friend, um, it oh, was awful. Shit. It was not a nice day outside, and we not, not, not a nice day inside. No, and we were hanging out, oh, and shit. well, I mean, I, I bring up the nice day outside because in the summer, if it was not nice out, there is no way my parents would have let us sit around in front of the fucking TV. Get for, out there, play some street hockey, street tennis. For get out three there. and a half fucking hours it takes to beat that game all well, the way. That's through. two players. That's two players. Imagine one player. Three and a half hours, and every time I'm like, no, that seems crazy. I look at like a long play or something, and no, it's long. The game is just that's ins- insanely you for NES game, that's long. insane. Yeah, three and a half hours it took to sit down and beat that game all the way through. And what a waste of a rainy day it was. We could have been playing anything, but it was one of those things where like you have to do you, it. You get far enough in. It's like bubble bubble, and it's 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 some cost fallacy. I'm like, I've already spent two hours on this. I'm just going to play for the next hour. I'm, I'm going to beat it. I have to beat it's, it. it. It's like it's like watching uh, the director uh, director's cut of Justice League. Zach Snyder's just like, I'm already an hour and a half in. I got to see how this fucking thing right. ends. So those are like the two Three big memories hours. I have. Yeah. One good, one not great at all. <laughs> wow. Nothing, nothing general? Like a general no. like summer memory of like playing games or... No, I mean, training I, with your friends or going it, over the house, going over to your, your Kevin's house and playing them. I mean, yeah, we always play. We, we would play them over at Kevin's house. It's not really much of a story, but I remember like the first time I ever played Contra was in the summer. Okay. Uh, Contra reminds me of the summer. I, I don't That's know when it, me I don't know when it was released, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, I mean, I definitely remember playing a lot of games in the summer. We would go inside when it rained. We would get a couple hours in at night when it was starting to get dark. But in terms of specific games, those are the two that pop up. Okay. Um, 
I, I can go on forever about Jersey Shore memories because that's sure. Somewhere. I mean, it's hard to do that. I always take for granted you can probably didn't go to the Jersey Shore. No, not Jersey. at all. I mean, that's I feel bad now. I want to take you. With, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll play frog. I'll, I'll pretend you're my frog bog. pretend you're my adopted kid. I'll play frog bog. We'll, we'll spin. We'll spin the, the the gambling wheels that are somehow the legal. Gambling wheels. They still are in this day. They're still there. You're five years old. You can put up your dollar and spin the wheel. It's gambling. It's gambling. Sorry, God. Um, I'll talk more about Jersey Shore stuff in conjunction with one game, Street Fighter Two. Street Fighter Two came out that summer. What was that? July of like '92 for the Super Nintendo, something like that. That's when it came out. Um, I, think, I believe it was that. I would go to the. I go to the mall. I went to remember Cap, Capcom World, whatever the hell it was called. Paid eighty fucking bucks for that game at a Pat's allowance. Eighty dollars. Which one? Street Fighter Two. Yeah, the original. It was. It was. It was overpriced. But yep. no, I remember uh, it was very expensive. That's actually I, something I always. I always it was, bring up. It was is, probably more. It was probably a bigger, bigger ROM board, which makes sense. And plus, it's Street Fighter Two. You're gonna pay for it. But that's probably what, why I went there. So I brought that game down the shore to play. I brought my Super Nintendo down the shore that summer. That uh, How long would you stay at the shore? Oh, uh, You'd usually go either. It was divided up. Uh, no, no, at this point, my grandma was. Uh, was my grandma alive or gone? Grandma died, I think, the year before. Um, so it was my grandma's house. There was five kids, the five uh, daughters and, and sons of my grandma would share it that summer. You get like a week and a half each. Basically, you get like a full week. They make you do oh, all you, you they say, oh, uh, my, my mom will go to her sister. You stay in this weekend. We're going to go for a weekend. So either three days or a full week. This is a full week. Well, there are my sister, my sister's friend, Stephanie. There, they were in high school at the time. Obviously, they were like 15. They're like 16 years old. And me, I play Street Fighter 2 on the little CRT in the house that was up in the little. You go to the Jersey Shore Seaside. All the houses have the front door and then they have the little God. What is it called? Not a vestibule. The little patio area with with the, with the screen door. It's enclosed, but it's like almost like it's added on. Sure, it's like the stuff where you take off all like your you know your your your, your fucking uh, your flip flops and sandals. You don't want to get in the house. Yeah, it's like you know it's um, six feet wide and and the, the length of the house. It's like small. You know you know what I mean. So there was like two chairs set up there. A little probably fifteen inch color CRT that was from like the eighties. You know, and we and we played uh play Street Fighter two that whole week, which is weird because you can play it four blocks away in the Jersey Shore. You can play, <laughs> you play the accurate version. You can play. It was champion out by the by summer ninety two probably was. But this didn't uh, cost you your quarters. Uh, no, this cost me seventy dollars, seventy eighty bucks with tax. Um, so I did that. So Street Fighter two is always that big summer me- memory. But now I'm gonna get into more specific games that debuted or you saw that summer on the Jersey Shore. Um. Stuff like, you know, the first time you go up to Casino Pier uh, and you see fucking uh, eight-player Daytona. Ooh, that's yeah. Something. That's always cool. Or even the four-player, but I think they had an eight-player one. And you're just like, what the hell is this? Daytona. Or, I guess a year or two before that, seeing four-player crew. They definitely had four-player crews in the USA there. And seeing that for the first time, whenever that was, 96, and you're like, Wow wow, this is like a really cool racing game that's cartoony and it's fun and it's four players and it's it's accessible, more accessible than, 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 than Daytona was. And those are things that hit you. Like, what are the first games I'm going to see on the boardwalk this year? Uh, like, the, like the first time um, Time Travel by Sega. The first time you saw that thing, that oh, summer. Time Traveler? Time yeah. Traveler, yeah. Or first, Hol- or Hol- Holoseum was the other one. Which I never saw ever in the arcade, but I did. I, I'm trying to think they ever, did they ever they ever refashion one. But anyway, time travel, the big white thing that Sega put out with the hologram where you're a cowboy and you're traveling through time. First time seeing that, you're like, "Wow, this is new game tech." And that's the thing about the arcades and how that's one thing I do miss, which is a, which is a, a seeing like all the new technology. Yeah, you it was right in front of your face. Yep. That's how you discovered it. That's how you discovered new games. Well, what is this? It's a new game. But yeah. that's the glory of arcades. Going back to the eight, early '80s, it's like. What's the here this week? Oh, okay. What's Miss Pac-Man? That's com- how would you know that's coming out? What are you, what are you, what are you getting the trades uh, <laughs> mailed to you? Going to the to the arcade show in Chicago or whatever? They're like, well, how would you know that's coming out unless you're an arcade opera? You wouldn't know. That's being worked on. And um, so those are the big ones. Games like Cruising USA, Time Traveling, like Killer Instinct, even the new like Tekken. You would see that summer. Yeah. Like the, the, when Tekken 2 came out, that was a big deal. I remember for, for whatever reason. The first Tekken, I don't remember seeing that much, but Tekken 2, for some reason, that was a game. It was like, wow, I love Tekken uh, and seeing that in the arcades that summer. 
It was a graphical step up from Virtua Fighter why? and the original Tekken. The original Tekken and the original Virtua Fighter. I mean, if you go back and you look at it, it's a little rougher the first one. Rough. But don't talk about the first Tekken. People like Tekken Two, fucking great. And yeah, Tekken Two and Tekken Three really took off. But like, I think with, I think Virtua Fighter is talked about because it was the first. And I think after that, it's like we'll talk about these again when they start looking good. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, but yeah, those are the games to me that uh, that stand up for gaming memories. I don't have as like the Kevin stories for this summer. Um, my, my, uh, my neighbor Billy, one you know, that got me into all different types of music. My neighbor Billy, that had the Genesis. So, you know, you go over there, you play Altered Beast. I'm sure I played that. What was that late summer that came out? I played that. He got Genesis right away of an 89. He got that pretty, pretty, pretty lickety split. He got that. He pretty got everything. Splitty. Um, so we had that. So I never really played NES with him that much. Uh, we played uh, Genesis. So I guess you can say like Altered Beast. Probably Moonwalker. He probably got that pretty much straight away. Secondly, probably September. It's still summer. But one of splice hairs. So those are memories. I always think he got Moonwalker right away. He had Altered Beast. And I think he had Time of the Sword of Baseball. Those are like the three I think he had right away. I believe. I don't think he had Pat Riley basketball. I think he had Time of the Sword. Because that, that would have been the baseball game, right? That would have been the first big Tommy baseball Lissardo, game. Tommy Lasorda, yes. Yeah, that would have been the first baseball game. So those are, those are my uh, summertime uh, memories there. And yeah, of course, I played my own Nintendo games before I go outside. You know, I probably burned my eyeballs trying to beat Rygar, you know, one of those summers, probably summer 88. You know, I probably tried to do that and probably failed miserably or 89. But yeah, I do miss the arcades. I do too. For for new games. It's almost like, yeah. And that's it's not just it's not just nostalgia. There's there's it, it, there's an experience that happened that was different. It was I guess that's nostalgia in a way, but it it's, is. It's, but it's the whole experience is gone. That's the only thing. That experience is absolutely wiped out. Sure. Seeing Simpsons Arcade for the first time at Barnacle Bills. I will never forget that. I mean, never forget that. I don't know how I didn't think of that. Seeing that, walking into the, the mini golf was, was near the street. You walk into, there's there's the ice cream place next to it. You walk into the, the building and seeing it was like World Heroes there. And then nine feet away in the middle of the, they wanted to display it was, was Simpsons Arcade. And that was like, imagine seeing that when you were a kid. I remember the first time seeing the Turtles arcade game. Same sort of feeling. But I remember that arcade in particular, it was seeing that in the arc, uh, summer was, was Simpsons. And that was like, this is impossible. This is the cartoon. I'm, I'm playing the cartoon. I mean, right. It's fantastic. 